Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you for your spirit that abides in us and dwells with us, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just want your heart to be lifted up and in your consciousness just connect. Connect with the glory that is here. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you know the word of God is alive. Eh? It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Eh? Glory to God. And that word, it is here. It is going to come forth as sharp as God intended it to be. Eh? Now that, that would mean it will divide anything. Anything that is in your life, it will cut through and bring forth that which God desires in your life. Eh? Uh, so, uh, today, I felt it of necessity to be with you that I may impart to you a strength from above, hallelujah, that will be able to not only preserve you during these times, but to protect you and also to increase you more, to, to give you a strength from above that will cause you to burst forth, hallelujah. Because you see, uh, one of the things that has not been uh, uh, properly appreciated today, uh, like properly, properly appreciated today, uh, is the fact that uh, the things that are seen, the things that we interact with uh, on a physical plane, the things that give us experience, that we think we are experiencing, actually come from the things that do not appear. That is Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Yeah? It says the things that are seen uh, do not come from the things that do appear. Now that would mean that there is a, a parent, parent realm um, from which the things that you interact with on a physical plane uh, come from. Everything that you experience on a physical plane, everything that you interact with that to you is an experience, comes from uh, a parent realm which is invisible. The things that are seen that is generally speaking. The things that are seen, everything that is seen, everything that is felt, you can say that, you can add that. Everything that is, um, that you can touch, that you can smell, and I'll give you experiences with that, eh, if God wills, eh, uh, comes from a dimension or a place uh, where, of the things that are not seen. Eh? You need to understand that. Eh? And you need to appreciate that on another plane, eh? on another level. Because you see, um, much of when people start experiencing things, uh, they do not know where they are coming from. And because they don't know where they are coming from, sometimes they get confused, sometimes they get disgruntled, sometimes they don't know how to uh, match up to that realm in order to either enhance those things or prohibit those things from happening. Because when things happen, people just take them for granted uh, on the surface level on the plane level uh, of, of things that, uh, you know, it has happened and it has happened. Eh? They don't understand that it is coming from somewhere. And so uh, it ought to be either harnessed or prohibited from happening. Eh? Hallelujah. So now this is, uh, this is something that uh, the Spirit of God would have us appreciate, uh, uh, you know, today, uh, such that we can uh, uh, harness some things and enhance them eh, in our experience and then also prohibit certain things from happening. You know that we are in the year of the overcomer. Eh? And because we are in the year of the overcomer, there's going to be some things which are, are going to try to challenge you. Eh? And so those things, uh, you, sh you really need to know. You will need to be aware that uh, they've, not, they've come from somewhere. And you need to be aware from where they are coming from. Uh, and then we deal with them emphatically from that uh, position and from that standpoint. So, you see, uh, you remember when uh, uh, Jesus was born? Eh? When Jesus was born, and then you remember when uh, 
the wise men, eh? some people said there were three, there were not three, eh? <laughs> and the Bible doesn't say there were three, but then when the wise men uh, came, eh? and then uh, uh, had gifts, because they had three categories of gifts, people said there were three wise men. Eh? Uh, so anyway, so when they came along, and then they were announcing uh, uh, the birth of Jesus, remember to Herod the king. So Herod all of, all of a sudden is awakened and he is uh, he's, he's infuriated at the birth of, at the birth of this uh, uh, so-called king who was supposed to, who is actually a king spiritually. Because you see, to be a king spiritually, you're more powerful than a king or someone who has been just enthroned naturally. Yeah? When your position of kingship is initiated uh, uh, in the spirit, that is more powerful. That is eternal. The things that are not seen are eternal, the scripture says. Eh? So, now, when Herod hears that, all of a sudden he's infuriated, he's indignant, and then uh, he, he starts plotting um, the death of Jesus. And because of the birth of Jesus, you remember, uh, it says, uh, Herod sent out an order, a command, that every child who was below two years of old, a male child two years of old, would die, would be killed. Eh? So you see, here is uh, now something which is somewhat of a contradiction. Eh? You have Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the life himself. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Eh? And he's born. Eh? But after he is born, supposed to bring life, joy to the world, the Lord is, you know, you know, supposed to bring life, then all of a sudden, at his birth, instead death manifests. <laughs> and children who are under the age uh, of uh, two years of old are slaughtered all over, you know, uh, that part of the world. Eh? So sometimes you need to understand these things, you need to read these things, because now, uh, you know, people would start now wondering, you know, what kind of man, uh, you know, uh, is this? He's born, he's supposed to be the savior, the one who brings life, and after he's born, instead a, a contradiction and contradictory circumstances takes place. Eh? Uh, you see death happening. So you need to understand eh, uh, even where the manifestations are coming from, and sometimes they will contradict that which has been expected. Eh? And if you don't understand that they are contradicting that which has been expected, uh, you, will, you, you may lose hope, or you may be confused, and because you're confused and you lose hope, uh, you, you end up like, uh, you know, uh, uh, cornered by the enemy, and, uh, you know, you will not, you will not have uh, a certain direction to take, eh, knowing the outcome of things. Eh? Uh, you know, the same thing happened when, um, um, you know, Moses, you know, during the time of Moses, so uh, people died. Eh? So sometimes, uh, sometimes, when things are taking when things are expected to take a certain shape uh, on a positive angle, it is, you're likely to experience something that is, that seems to be a contradiction to where you are, uh, to, to what you are expecting, eh? especially after, you know, uh, you, you are expecting something to be, to be birthed positively. It's, it's, it's likely that you will experience something uh, that is uh, from the realm of darkness, eh? that, that, is, that is negative. And if you're not discerning enough, if you do not know the dynamics of the spirit and learn how to read things in the spirit, you will lose heart, you will be disheartened, and then, uh, you know, and the enemy can take advantage of you. Eh? Uh, so that is why the spirit of God would have you, like, awake and know how to handle things, how to deal with things. Many, you know, the scripture talks about how uh, um, many who are immature can be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Anything that comes just blows you here and there because you do not understand. Eh? So because you see something negative happening to you, you may actually start thinking, okay, but God, what have I done? Lord, I even, I, what? I was faithful. And then you see people, what? Like really losing it. But if you know that in the realm of the spirit, the influences are both the influence of the spirit of God, but and also the influence of, of, of demonic spirit. And it doesn't mean that... Uh, uh, you know, if you experience the influence of, 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 of devils, you know, uh, in your life, that they have actually come to, to whip you and to overcome you. You need to understand that there's a time when demonic influences may be seen and felt, uh, uh, you know, in your life and the effects of them. Eh? 
uh, you may actually experience them. And you need to know that, you need to know the extent to which they go. Because if you do not understand this, you may actually lose heart again, and then you lose track. Eh? You think that, uh, you know, you're defeated. You think either God doesn't love you. You think you've missed it. And that's where the enemy wants you, in a place of doubt, you know, wondering, what have I done, Lord? Uh, why have you forsaken me? Then some of you start now saying, Lord, I'm sorry for messing up. But you, you go into those, those grounds. Eh? And then he, has, he gets you now. He's, uh, you know, he's cornered you. Eh? Uh, you need to understand that, eh? And when God has uh, groomed you uh, in the spirit, you start to say these things uh, before they happen. I remember one time, about uh, four years ago, five years ago, when I was praying for you, really, <laughs> I, was, uh, uh, I was somewhere in Bugolobi, in some place. Eh? Uh, I decided to go there for one week just to pray. Uh, somewhere not far from here. <laughs> and uh, so I remember in the night, while I was, uh, you know, uh, praying in the spirit, uh, the spirit of God uh, started telling, showing me someone and then told me, uh, one, one among you, <laughs> then told me that uh, uh, that one is just about to be attacked. And he showed me why he's about to be attacked. And then he told me that uh, there's an evil spirit that has been sent to attack him eh, and to actually kill him. So uh, <laughs> then I, I, you know, I so I, I was I was caught up uh, in surprise. So I started now praying in the spirit, wanting. It, then the, the Lord said, "You are you are about to see it." So it it passed about two three minutes while I was praying in the spirit and really concerned. Uh, I had something across, like in the bathroom. Uh, it was like a sound of uh, a lot of flies flies, you know, very many flies, uh, and then, uh, uh, so I woke up from my bed to go and see what was happening there, and then the sight of what I saw was uh, something that was really, really, really horrific. Eh? There was uh, a bunch of flies, masses and masses of flies, and uh, they were shaped you know, they were shaped in a, fig, in a figure form. They were shaped together. You understand, eh? Uh, uh, flies, you know, in some figure, some figure form, uh, a form of uh, a demon, really, say a creature, but made of flies. And then this thing was looking at me and howling. Eh? Then all of a sudden I said, in the name of Jesus, and the thing disappeared. So uh, that was on Sunday. On Tuesday, I was seated somewhere, and then, uh, you know, ready to um, be picked up and come to, <laughs> to by then I think we were at uh, some theater down there. We used to hold Tuesdays in some theater down there. So anyway, so uh, this guy comes, uh, this particular guy who I had seen uh, uh, that night. So when he comes and he sits right across me, all of a sudden, he's knocked off. And then he loses strength. He totally loses it. Now, just at the point when uh, uh, they just they'd come to pick me uh, to go for service. So I, of course, knew that this is the manifestation of that. Then I am, uh, I go, of course, when I know that, you know, because this, he was arranged and, uh, you know, kept somewhere with some people. Uh, but I knew that uh, it will not take him to the extreme because of what had happened. Eh? Now, with so many people, if, because it was really severe, the attack that happened to him, eh? uh, with so many people, if you are in such a position, many people would actually think that, uh, you know, would get into panic. They would not know what actually is taking place. Eh? Now, that is why it is so important. There is nothing that happens, nothing, I say nothing, there is nothing that happens in the physical. There is nothing that we see. The things that are seen are not made from the things that do appear. All those things are planned, are schemed, and are brought forth from the realm that is uh, immaterial, the realm that is invisible. Now, for us, when we start experiencing them here, many times it's either too late, and we are, or we are either ignorant, 
of what of where actually they have been, uh, where they are coming from. And this is whether uh, either where in, in the realm of God or whether they are the things that are demonic. Can we have some quietness there? Can we have quietness? There's an interruption from uh, that place. Eh? So anyway, this is uh, this is something that uh, we need to uh, uh, properly uh, understand and properly discern. Eh? Uh, because we need to understand that, uh, uh, and because when you understand them and you discern those things and you capture them, then all of a sudden you start, uh, you, you take charge, <laughs> you know, you take charge over things and then you are not caught off guard. Now I've had a number and number of experiences like that. Sometimes uh, the scripture says even you can have angels appear to you uh, and uh, you know, uh, you know, and, and you actually cannot discern them because you don't know. Uh, it, it says, uh, you may fail to entertain strangers because, uh, don't fail to entertain strangers because there might be angels. You, you get it? Uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Can you imagine something that is coming from the realm of God but somehow you do not, you cease or you fail to tap into it because uh, you do not discern the invisible realm from where it's coming from. And that has sometimes, like, uh, many times actually, like got in a state in a state of panic or uh, not realize when what is knocking at our door is uh, actually so, so important when our, uh, you know, manifestation of the blessing has come at the, at the door. And then you close it off eh? uh, because you do not, or either you are indifferent towards it because you don't understand. I've seen people who are on the verge of something so big in their lives, and they still think that, uh, you know, they're some miles away from what they have been looking for. And they are really on the verge. Eh? And then afterwards, <laughs> I was dealing with some people about two, three months ago. Then afterwards, when that happens, all of a sudden, eh, they, they can't believe it. <laughs> but you see, the things that are seen, the things that are seen do not come from the uh, uh, you know, uh, are not made of things which do appear. That means everything that is experienced, everything that is experienced, everything that is experienced, everything relationally, everything materially, everything financially, can you imagine that? That, that would be very revolutionary. That comes from a place which is invisible. In other words, it's manufactured from somewhere. Now, you need to lay, take a hold of that place again eh, and get it, you know, uh, uh, learn how to take charge of it and learn, learn how to manifest it or prohibit it from manifesting, eh, especially when it is negative. Eh? Prohibit it from manifesting. So you see, uh, then you read stories. You read stories like uh, Job, you remember? Uh, uh, Job and then uh, at some point, he was there in life, you know, and uh, he was doing well. He was doing very well, you know. Uh, life was going on as uh, no more, and his, uh, uh, everything was really good. The scripture says he feared God, and, uh, you know, they were having everyday parties. They, there never seems to be a party in the, in, the, in the household of Job, every single day. <laughs> and then, out of the blue, out of the blue, all, all of a sudden, no, things begin going down. You need to understand these things. Eh? And then people don't understand how did this happen. Eh? You see, eh? uh, you need to understand how that happened, why that happened. Eh? You, you need, until you understand what happened in the realm of the spirit, you will not know. You will just say, hey, you know, Bambi, you know, this man, calamity fell upon him. No, you know, something happened in the realm of the spirit. Eh? And that which happened in the realm of the spirit affected the manifestation of the things that are seen, that people, that people started to see. Eh? Something happened. It, it was going on no more until something happened in the realm of the spirit. Then that which transpired in the realm of the spirit manifested the things that, uh, you know, uh, that he started experiencing. Now, what happened exactly? <laughs> Job, God was his problem. <laughs> the things that he experienced, eh? God was his major problem. God started bragging about him. And then he provoked the devil. Then, uh, you know, if God had left him alone, and you know, because God had called for a council meeting. You know, there's a, uh, 
there's actually a meeting of uh, the Heavenly Council. So when God had called for a uh, Heavenly Council meeting, and then there were angels and archangels that came to attend that uh, council meeting, the devil also came in with them. Eh? <laughs> you know, some of you people, you think that uh, when the devil shows up in heaven, sometimes ah, he manifests. No, 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 no. Eh? <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> he is still free with God and with everything. There. It is something that most people don't understand. Eh? The time. Anyway, first go to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Let's first read that story a bit. Eh? Verse 1. Eh? It says, There was a man in the land of Uz. Eh? Now, this place, I know it very well because I was there. Eh? You see, eh? there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Eh? Verse 2. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also, you know, the man had substance, eh? you know, eh? was 7,000 sheep. Now, God, can you imagine saying, okay, now let me narrate to you what this guy had, eh? his substance. Eh? God is concerned about that, eh? you know. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 Cars, okay, camels. <laughs> you see, some people, you know, some people are really messed up in the head. I was going to use some other word, you know. So when you meet some unbelievers and some religious Christians, they ask you, but, but, but Jesus did not have a Range Rover. <laughs> but you see, neither did he have a phone, eh? you see. Eh? You, you, anyway, he says, now this was the substance of wealth then, eh? you see, things that you can, uh, you know, translate into. Uh, modern language as money, cars, houses, and you know, substance already. Eh? So God is literally showing that this was a man of substance, eh? uh, a, a man of wealth. Eh? His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 uh, yoke of oxen and uh, 500 she asses <laughs> and uh, a very great household eh? so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Can you imagine that? That Job, now I want you to get me very well here, very, very clear here, because this is something that uh, we are walking into. Eh? This describes who we really are. Eh? This part of the world, during this time, because I saw what, what it was like, eh? this was the time when you had the Raphaim. You know who the Raphaim are? Okay, the Vachues. <laughs> <laughs> this was the time where you had demigods. Eh? <laughs> this was the time when you had the giants, those that were born of the, of the watchers, eh? uh, that hybrid. That's the time when they were at its peak. You know Job existed before Abraham, although your Bible actually uh, tweaks it. Eh? But that was early that time. Actually, it was right about the time of Genesis 6, eh? Uh, uh, described when that was taking place. Now, during that, that, that place there, there was the time of those giants who actually did exploits, but Job outdid them. Eh? Job outdid them in wealth. He was the greatest during the time of the giants in that part of the world. Eh? Now, and uh, while they spread that darkness, he still rose up above them eh? during that time. He says, uh, and uh, he had a very great household, so that this man, Job, now you see, this is your testimony, you need to understand this, eh? this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. No wonder God was bragging about him. Eh? You see, you see here, you're not talking about some guy who is just deep that way, you see, eh? who prays in a prayer closet somewhere. He's, he had come forth out of that, the prayer closet, closet had made him, had modeled him to become the greatest now outward. And that's what it should be like. Eh? You see, it shouldn't end in some kind of uh, closet, you know, uh, uh, praying there. Out there on the world, worldly scene, you ought to be seen as the greatest, eh? as the most influential. You understand that? Eh? And that is why we never, never, never at all 
you know, settle for anything of, you know, that puts us, you know, that way, you know. You know, okay, yeah. no, 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 no. You know, it has to be testified that when we show up, when we speak, when we try to do, to engage in anything, every other thing first, you know, has to be put on hold. Eh? The greatest of all the men of the East, this was Job. Eh? The greatest of all the men of the East. It wasn't somewhere, of, oh, no, I'll keep humble. No, 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 not those things. Eh? You know, <laughs> I was somewhere and uh, repeatedly, repeatedly, <laughs> uh, I, whoever was, ex you know, encountering it, eh? uh, they were telling me how what? You're a very humble man, eh? This is it, but this guy is here. Like, what am I missing here, you know? <laughs> and maybe they were, they were saying it rightly, eh? But because I've come to know what humility means in, with the uh, fake guys, eh? You see, eh? So if you have one person saying, eh, your humility is really too much, eh? I said, okay, I, I can go ahead. Let another person saying, very humble. I said, okay, now I think I, I might be missing something here, eh? <laughs> And someone said, uh, without revealing a lot, you know, when I got somewhere, said, a person of your stature, you, you come in here and you are just alone, you know? Then I said, okay, then I think I'm missing something here. <laughs> anyway, but the thing is, the thing is, when we move, the world ought to feel our effect. Eh? The world ought to feel our effect. Whatever we do, it ought to, to, be, to be felt. Eh? And this was the testimony of, of, of Job. He eh? says, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Eh? Now, verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Eh? You know, they had a feast. Eh? Uh, in their houses, eh? in plural. Eh? Everyone, his day. Can you imagine eh? that... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the parties used to be distributed among the houses. So today, we, we, the parties at your home. Oh, okay, now I gather here. Every, every day, you know, had, they had to change house for a party. Now, their lives were just party, party, party every day. Feasts. <laughs> and these sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone his, uh, everyone his day. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them, eh? And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Uh, he used to intercede them and to cover them, in other words. Eh? For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cast God in their heart, in their hearts. Eh? Uh, thus did job uh, continually. Eh? Now, in your age, in your time now, uh, the scripture says, if we walk in the light, uh, even as is in the light, it says the blood of Jesus, of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You understand that? Eh? It says if you walk in the light, even as is in the light. Eh? And no, so many people don't understand this. Eh? How can you walk in the light and then there is a blood cleansing, cleansing you from all unrighteousness? If you're in the light, some people think there is no unrighteousness. Eh? <laughs> and we'll go at that. Eh? It says, if we walk in the light, you see, eh? and uh, 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 as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses. In other words, you have unrighteousness, you know, uh, that will be taken care of. Eh? But now that light is what, uh, it's, it's, it's the attunement. Eh? If you pursue him, in other words, eh? if you are in a uh, uh, hooked on, eh? onto her, his agenda, you're walking with him. Eh? He says, everything that is... Uh, and unrighteous shall be cleansed away by his blood. Eh? Cleanses us. It's a, uh, it's a present continuous tense. It's happening even now. Eh? You see, eh? uh, it may be that uh, my sons of sins and cast God in their hearts. Uh, thus Job did continually. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, <laughs> now these were the angelic beings, eh? uh, uh, the sons of God came to present themselves uh, before the Lord. This that time when it happens where they actually gather. And uh, this is what is called the heavenly council. And uh, it, is, it, is, it is something that we can't describe now because it will mess up many people. Eh? And Satan came also 
among them. He says, now, here, heavenly council, and he knew that council. He said, today let me go and attend, and attend this thing here. Eh? <laughs> so he comes. He has his way just like that. He comes in and uh, to attend. Eh? <laughs> he said, Satan also came. Can you imagine? Now you might think that when Satan sees God, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. Eh? <laughs> anyway, verse uh, 7. Eh? And the Lord said unto Satan, eh? the Lord started conversing with him. Whence comest thou? Eh? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, You know, the Lord said, hey, Where have you been? <laughs> and Satan said, ah, Man, I've just been touring around. Eh? You know, I was walking, I went that side, I went to Munyonyo, I went to Kololo. You know, then I've just been moving around, really just have chilling along the earth. That's what was telling the Lord. Because, eh? you know, <laughs> he said, Okay, let's read it in King James. Some of you don't like that, that kind of expression. Eh? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth, eh? you know, he's moving. Just, he's just chilling around, eh? <laughs> walking around, and uh, from walking up and down in it. Eh? Just there, I say, Okay, now today I think where, where should I visit? Eh? Then he goes here, yeah. then he chills there, he says, Okay. So in, the Lord wanted to find out what you what, hey, what have you been up to this of recent? Eh? Said ah man, eh? just been moving around and that has been my life. It's fun anyway. <laughs> Verse eight, eh? and the Lord said unto Satan, Oh, since you've been moving around, eh? you must have come across a, a certain man called Elvis. Anyway, <laughs> and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant? Because he knew that he must have, you know, come come across him. Eh? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man and an upright man, one that fears God and eschewed evil. So now he is, he is bragging about, uh, you know, Job. Eh? Uh, then Satan answered the Lord eh, and said, Ah, <laughs> you think he fears you for nothing? <laughs> and Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for nothing? You know, it's, it's because of the, the prosperity anointing. Eh? <laughs> anyway, verse 10. Eh? Has not thou made an hedge about him? Because you see, when you are walking with God, like we know, eh? <laughs> we know some of these things. Eh? There's, a, there's a place when you're walking with God where you are invisible. When you know it, you feel it, you have it, and you know that you're being untouchable, you're being invincible. You, that sense of it, eh? no one, you know, when, when Jesus said that, what? Uh, that the God of this world has come, but he has no part in me. Eh? You know that there's nothing that can be done against you that can actually succeed, that can come anywhere, can even harm you in any way. You know it, and you ought to know it because this is your portion. Eh? So, this is what he was, uh, you know, uh, uh, Satan was talking about it. He was saying, ah, it's because you've even placed this hedge. Eh? Has thou not made an hedge about him? You know? You're not just there. You, you don't think that people can plot and plot this and plot that and then somehow they have their way. There's something about you that is so special, that is resistant to anything that is negative concerning your life and your destiny. It cannot succeed. I'm telling you, there's only one outcome as far as you're concerned. One single outcome that whatever comes against you shall be crushed. That is just it. And you, you need to understand these things because you see, you, you are you're not ordinary. You are spirit. And the, the kind, you know, you, 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 you are, you are a kindred spirit. And you need to understand and to study your kind. Eh? Your kind are not just people who anyone can just touch and anything can just happen and then they get away with it. You really need to understand that. Eh? You know, <laughs> the things which I see, and, uh, you know, of course, uh, with, with a lot of editing. Eh? You know, when I was, uh, the, the other day, I just come out of somewhere and uh, uh, someone came to me who uh, I think they, were, they had sent them. Not I think, I know they had sent them. Eh? So they had, uh, they were timing me because they knew I, I was going to be there that time. Eh? So, comes to me. And then says, ah, you see, ah, perfect, I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, you know, 
Uh, you don't know me, what? So he pretends first to the prayer request uh, thrown there. He said, but I uh, saw so there's something I want to talk to you. Uh, you see, uh, th there's, there's some people whom uh, you, you need to, what? Uh, you, you, they're, they're not the ones who are doing these things. So for them, they even, uh, they have just have a lot of pressure on them. So I knew these ones are fearing judgment, you know. <laughs> and I've said some guy. Eh? So you see, eh? That, uh, you know, there's a pressure, there's a lot of things they can't handle, but, you know, so if you just, I just understand that, eh? <laughs> So, anyway, uh, we said we'll see about that, eh? But it looked like uh, there was fear in the enemy's camp, eh? But anyway, the thing is, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, when I was somewhere, uh, you all know I was in Kenya, so anyway, I have to say it. Eh? When I was there, I was seated somewhere, and uh, uh, some guy comes. And that time I was meditating, so I didn't want, uh, you know. So some guy comes, and then I say, say, I think I know you. So, and I was in a private place, so anyway, I said, okay, now, time to work some magic here. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, yeah. So I looked down in a, in a, just in a very quick way. So I looked back up at him and said, OK, do you know me now? He said, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I will not go into the details because, again, it will mess some of you people up. Eh? But then all of a sudden, something had changed. Eh? The thing is, when you know that you are spirit, you should never, never, never forget that. And you know what enhances it? Actually knowing it being conscious of it every single moment, applying it every single moment, going somewhere, knowing it, and knowing that you're going to influence them by something that is invisible. It's just going to make them either like you or have favor upon you, whatever it's going, it's, it has to work for you. It's, it's just something about you that affects things. So that the things that are seen are not made of the things that do appear. They come from somewhere. You see? So, this realm is something that should really be like put to use. Eh? Anyway, Job here, we see what is happening to him. It's, it's coming from somewhere, you see. Uh, verse 10 again. Eh? Has not thou made an hedge about him and uh, about his house and about all that he has, uh, he has on every side? Uh, in other words, eh? uh, he's telling him that you know, his whole life it's really you and that's why, he, of course, you expect him not to, you know, not to love you, you know, not to reverence you when, uh, you know, he uh, has all these things, you know. I just need to what? To get this devil here and, tell, and show him some people whom he has blessed and yet don't have this love, eh, you know. Anyway, some pastors. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Has, that, has, has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the, works of, the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. This guy is blessed. His substance has increased. So what do you expect? You're just trying to brag about him, but you do, it's just because of what? Your things. Eh? So anyway, verse 11. He says, but put forth your hand now and touch all that he has. And he will cast you to your face. <laughs> that was saying eh? that you want to see the real job eh? put forth your hand start touching his substance and the things that make him comfortable and the things that bring him joy I met some girl who left the Lord because her boyfriend had chucked her eh? <laughs> and these things happened really eh? but now here you see eh? uh, it says put forth your hand now and touch all that he has, and he will cast you to your face. Say, God, eh? he loved me. You know, eh? <laughs> says he will cast, uh, uh, verse 11 again, he said, he will cast you to your face. Now, in other words, change his condition and let's see. Change his condition and let's see whether uh, his love will remain genuine. Eh? And that is one thing that uh, the enemy actually uh, uh, you know, thinks that he's doing in this time. Eh? Uh, verse 12, sorry. Go to verse 12. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he, is, all, all that he has is in your power. And in other words, that hedge is taken off. Eh? Uh, uh, only upon himself, put not forth your hand. Eh? So Satan went forth uh, from the presence of the Lord. Eh? Uh, so now you see, the, the, the thing is, uh, you need to understand this. Eh? You really need to understand this, and you need to understand that as a remnant of God, uh, your connection with God, your connection with God, your connection with reality springs from the realm of the spirit. Eh? That's where it is from. Eh? And so, uh, uh, when you understand that, eh, there's nothing that is in manifestation here that shall move you, eh? positive or negative. Eh? You know, uh, if people who get so excited eh, by uh, uh, positive stuff, and they become, especially, uh, you can become ex unhealthily excited. Eh? Uh, people who get to those extremes, it is because, again, they really have not found where true value comes from. And true value is, comes, true value is really in the realm of the unseen, eh? the thing that actually manufactured this. So when someone comes and, uh, for instance, like finds you, uh, you know, uh, away, you know, and uh, opens this door for you, and uh, you know, some money comes to you uh, in, in excess, and you know, all these things. Eh? Some people who find themselves in, uh, uh, in that measure of manifestation, they actually begin, uh, you know, shaking, and they are, many of them actually are overtaken by what is happening to them, and instead of uh, uh, remaining in the realm from which this, uh, these things manifested, they are swept away by the wind, eh? and then they are taken over because they actually think that uh, the physical manifestation, the, the experience out here, you know, the position they have received, that's where now, that's actually the blessing. Eh? They don't realize that uh, there was something, there was somewhere, somewhere unseen eh? from which this thing manifested, and if you, they, you connect yourself with that, then you're rooted, eh? and uh, whatever happens here, you know, so you see people like, they don't know how to um, um, keep posted, eh? the, uh, to, to post themselves in the realm of the spirit and handle these things from that angle. And because of that, again, they are, um, they are moved and they are messed up when things, uh, uh, when they are either blessed or when things uh, happen negatively. You need to understand this. Eh? So anyway, here we see the Lord permits uh, Satan to do what uh, 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 what he wanted to do and he says don't but don't touch his life so Satan starts eh, in verse 13 you see eh? uh, he says and there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating they were just having fun eh? you know these guys used to have fun every single day you know eh? eating and drinking milk okay <laughs> I think I will not read that eh? in their eldest okay eating and drinking Wine eh? in their eldest brother's house, eh? so it was party now was at the eldest brother's house. Eh? And uh, there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. Verse 15 eh? and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only. I must kept alone to tell you everything is down. Only me have come to tell you. Verse 16. While he was yet, he was still communicating, you know, this um, misfortune, there came another guy also. <laughs> Said, you still talking about that? The fire of God <laughs> has fallen from heaven. Imagine saying, you even call it the fire of God. Eh? It's fallen from heaven and has burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and I only am escaped alone to tell you. You know, verse 17. Eh? Why was yet, man, have you had that day where you still here trying to figure out this? And another thing, you still dealing with that? There's also this one here. You have to face it. So it happens. So while he was yet sleeping, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans, this is where he used to, uh, this is the land he was, eh? 
which children were really uh, witch doctors and stuff eh, in that part of the world eh, made out three bands and fell upon the camel and have carried them away yeah, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only am, am escaped while he was yet verse 18 then they again what you see now uh, he was yet speaking there came also another and said your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and uh, behold there came a great wind from the wilderness now things just conspiring eh, against him eh? and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and i only am escaped alone now that was this final story so it was misfortune after misfortune after now job doesn't know that god's bragging about him is that which started now unleashing all this evil because the, the devil said okay now let's try and what and get him now then of course you know, uh, uh, guys come around and start interpreting it wrongly, start saying, oh, maybe you've sinned against God. Or maybe they, you just don't understand. Eh? Once you are the righteousness of God in Christ, it is not coming from God. Eh? It is never coming from God. Actually, it is because when you see something happening, you know, a strike that has happened uh, to you, it is because of uh, in that very area, that's where there was a blessing that was being fashioned by the Spirit of God eh, to come for you. And so he will hit a manifestation of that. Uh, just like again you see, uh, we saw in the, in the day of Jesus where, you know, uh, a, a, a child, a male child who is born, you know, as Savior. And then what you see being struck is a, a male child eh, that is being struck in death. So people, people don't get that uh, uh, many times when you see things that are befalling you, it is because of the blessing that is being staged in the realm of the spirit. It's because God is going to birth for such a manifestation in your life and is going to bring glory in that very area where what uh, the enemy is trying to touch. Eh? You need to understand that very, very carefully. God began to show me uh, about uh, the spirit of the overcomer and uh, about uh, why and how um, he has prepared us and positioned us. Eh? Uh, as overcomers and how and what what is what we are up against eh? uh, the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places eh? so you, you know that eh? that uh, uh, what we are up against are not men eh? are not women we are up against demons we are up against satanic agents we are up against principalities, we are up against powers. That is where, you see, when you see men just coming up and rising up and saying, no, 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 and trying to release laws and principles, eh? we are not up against those men, eh? we are up against demons. But you see now on our side, we have angels. We have the archangel Michael. We have Raphael. We have Gabriel. We have, we, we have the spirits of just men made perfect. We have the blood of sprinkling, which speaks better things than the blood of, of, of Abel. We have Jesus, the mediator. We have God Almighty. Now, the light is on our side. On the other side, that is what is taking place. And the time has been made short. Eh? Actually, we are approaching that time eh? where, the, uh, you know, the execution the execution of darkness is going to be seen. So, just prepare yourself. Eh? <laughs> prepare yourself. Uh, the Spirit of God just had to make me make an appearance today to have you strengthened and especially have the eyes of so many opened up eh? and also release you into a more area, a more territory of freedom. You need to prepare for what is taking place. First, let's first read the final scripture. Uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Eh? Daniel 7, verse 25. I want you to understand that in this period where we have been, eh, there's been uh, uh, things which have uh, tried to come against, and that's why again the Spirit of God said, you are, uh, you are an overcomer. Eh? You are an overcomer. Why? Because there are things that have been fashioned or intended to overcome you. But you are an overcomer. Eh? Hallelujah. So anything that has been arrayed against you shall not overcome you. Eh? It shall not overcome you. You see, uh, one of the tactics of the enemy 
uh, one of the tactics of the enemy is to uh, is to isolate. You know, he's called a wolf, eh? uh, and that is why his tactic was again to isolate the believers, eh? have them not in fellowship, eh? and then he can strike. Eh? Uh, you remember Paul in Acts twenty, verse twenty-nine. Eh? In Acts 20, verse 29, let's first go, let's first read uh, Paul before he departs. He said, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. He eh? says, After my departing. So, because he knows that uh, when you have fellowship with him, when he's present, there's a grace that sustains you. Eh? But when he's not there, then all of a sudden, grievous wolves now come because you know there's 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 there's, uh, there's a grace that is renewed the more we have fellowship eh? and then you're always lifted up in that grace and it keeps renewing so uh that's why it says again you remember the scripture the prophecy that says strike the shepherd and the sheep shall scatter you know that very thing eh? so paul says after my departing shall now grievous wolves come he says and they shall not spare the flock now they come to tear they come to kill eh? uh, the flock eh? When you know, uh, one of the tactics of, of a wolf is to, after they have come in, then they isolate. They isolate the sheep. They can't, they don't want to find, they want to find the, no, that one which is alone. You've watched uh, National Geographic, eh? some of you can't keep your eyes on it. Eh? So they, the one which is now, they, they pursue it and then it is isolated. Then that one, they can tear it into pieces. And that's why you need, you as a remnant of God, eh? you need to keep in fellowship with each other. Try to find out where your sister, your brother is. Eh? I'm talking about in the spirit. Eh? Try to reach out to them. and You know, not everyone is on the same level spiritually. Eh? Uh, reach out to them. Have fellowship with them. Don't leave people isolated. You, will, you, you, know, you do not know how the enemy is planning to corner them. Eh? You will not realize how you've been helpful to rescue them you know, from that isolation. So when he isolates, that's what he does. First, by the departing of, uh, you know, Paul, and then wolves come in, and <laughs> then there's also, uh, you know, we're actually about to, to, to start fellowship, eh? yeah. and uh, we, are, we are planning an agenda. We have our agenda that is different from uh, the agenda that uh, is being planned by politicians. Eh? You're hearing that, eh? <laughs> you know. For them, they think, that what they, are, what they are planning is actually how, what the church is going to do. Eh? <laughs> That's what they think. Eh? So from the last news of what we are planning, I had, I think something exciting is happening. Eh? And uh, I think we shall secretly announce it to you. But by the time we get, because you see, for us, what we have been waiting for is just that. Eh? It's not programs eh, that have been set up by politicians. Eh? It is that. Eh? And when we establish it like this, hmm? <laughs> if I say a lot, eh? when we establish it like this, and then we prepare it, eh? we will call you, and then, uh, you know, the days of darkness will be first spent. Eh? Uh, so, where, how, how did I go there? <laughs> the thing is, just prepare, eh? you know. But in between that time, eh? Ah, I was going to say this. Eh? Do you remember I was, I was reading uh, somewhere uh, after I'd had, uh, uh, then afterwards I had an encounter uh, that uh, was uh, kind of comical, eh, you know, in the spirit, uh, which I will not go into in great detail. Eh? But you remember after Jesus uh, was crucified and then he's buried. Eh? Then the next time he shows up, eh, Peter was back fishing. <laughs> he had left his post. Eh? Now you are about to be surprised eh, when, uh, uh, you know, when uh, we resume, eh, how many people would have gone back fishing? Eh? <laughs> left their post. Eh? Anyway, but it was, it was funny, you know. It was just, it was really, really funny. The thing is, eh, when the enemy isolates you, uh, I mean, tries to isolate, learn, how, learn to discern his tactics. 
that is where he really, really, really corners you and he feeds on you when you're in that uh, state that is uh, really isolated. And then he doesn't feed on you really physically, but he throws at you things and then all of a sudden you have these weird thoughts, weird words. Then all of a sudden, you know, you're talking to us about Oprah Winfrey, what, 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 you know. We're talking about the anointing, you're talking about Oprah Winfrey, you know. You're talking about what you're bringing is, is weird stuff, eh? You really become weird. That's how, uh, that's how, that's the outcome of being cornered by ravenous wolves. You look at the person and say, hey, this has become the same Peter before he had encountered the Lord. Eh? He's, he's gone back eh, uh, to that. He's left his post, in other words. Eh? It is, anyway. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Eh? Uh, it says, and he, the spirit of the Antichrist, eh, shall speak great words against the most high. Eh? In other words, whatever shall become a proceeding forth. Eh? You know? And some, sometimes these great, great words against the most high are not necessarily, you know, God is bad. God is not, he's not very direct like that. It is, it is things like what? Ah, you know, follow the science. For it is things that contradict the fact that God is supreme. Eh? And they are spoken constantly and you're being channeled elsewhere, he said. And he shall speak great words against the most high. And he shall wear out the saints. You see, eh? Because there's this bombardment, bombardment, bombardment until the saints are worn out. Eh? And then they start saying, yes, let's follow the science, you know. Eh? And think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the, and the dividing of time. Eh? Verse 26. But the judgment shall sit. And that's where we are on now. We're me with the Lord. Eh? But the judgment shall sit. That's where the other guy came. <laughs> Trying to tell me, no. Let me tell you, I heard that thing. Of, uh, what, uh, what, eh? But please, just have mercy on this, this people. You know? It was particularly speaking for one person who was supposed to be made the, the example. <laughs> one particular person. Eh? How either she or he knew eh? <laughs> that they were the ones. Eh? <laughs> anyway, maybe it was automatic. Eh? But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion. Do you get what is happening here? says, but the judgment shall sit. The judgment shall sit. And we are in that process where we, are, we, are, we, are, we have sat eh? <laughs> to take away dominion. Are you getting what is happening here? Because what I'm speaking to you here is now prophetic. Eh? I'm telling you that evil may reign for just a time. Eh? And it appears like it's worn out the saints, done this and done that and done that.